Hello, everybody. So today I want to talk about end phase, and I especially want to talk about solar in general and why solar is a zero to one technology. So in this sort of a series, I'm running uh, a few stocks through this whole idea that a product in order to win in the marketplace, that product has to be radically better than the competition. And that's the idea of a book zero to one. You know, the whole idea of if that if your product is 20% better or 30% better, that's not going to lead people to change their frames of mind. That's not going to lead people to make stock changes or to adopt an expensive product, right? People are not going to change their life and go out of their way because they will resist change if you're just offering them a technology that is only 20 or 30% better. It's not enough for people to switch. But as Peter Thiel taught us in the Zero to One book, when you have a product that is 10 times better than the rest, than, than what's out there, adoption is inevitable. And oftentimes what you get is a complete disruption of the marketplace by sometimes the arrival of near monopolies because the legacy companies do not get it, right? They do not understand what is happening. And solar, to me, is a prime example of a zero to one technology or sector that is going after the disruption of utilities and utilities have no idea what's coming. And in fact, if you if you read annual reports of legacy utilities, I mean, they're just talking about ROE, 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 making profits, making investments in old techs that... Uh, um, really don't have a future compared to solar. And so solar, in my view, is getting adopted. And my style of investing, you may know, is uh, looking at this chart. What is this? That's the S-curve, right? That's the product adoption curve. My style of investing is I want to invest in companies uh, whose products are getting adopted. And so the whole idea, if I look at a stock like Enphase, I believe we're in the early days of solar. You know, when I take a walk around the neighborhood, less than 10% of the roofs have uh, solar, way, 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 way under 10% of these roofs have solar, which means that, you know, I'm going to ride these stocks all the way until the time where 80% of the roofs have solar, have solar, because that's what I believe will happen, because the technology is that much better. So let's go through this comparison of Enphase in general and solar in general versus legacy utilities and how much better it is. And by priceless difference, when I say a priceless difference, I literally mean it's priceless. Like I can't really price it with money, but I have to price it in, uh, in other ways, right? right? Like hedonic adjustments, like it's better for some reason. For example, green energy is uh, versus no green energy. Well, that's a price difference because you're that's not that's not an economic difference if that makes a difference if that makes a, if, if that makes sense sorry so anyways let's get started so electricity so when you go to buy electricity for your house you can go to the utilities and so the price what you see is what you get that's the price this month that's the price this year. Usually they price it every six months or every year on a per contract basis. And then when the price renews or the year moves on to the next year, the price goes up. That's legacy utilities. Solar doesn't work this way. Solar is you have a fixed upfront cost, right? You're, you're going to pay between twenty five and $35,000 for a decent install for your house. And that's that fixed upfront cost uh, that you may pay cash, quite simply, or you may finance it. But the main, the key difference between, between, between solar and, and, and legacy utilities is that with solar, you have visibility into the cost of your energy. You know exactly how much the cost of the energy is going to cost you for the whole lifetime of a house, essentially. Uh, with legacy utilities, you don't have that. You know that the prices will keep going up with inflation, with investments. So the difference here is, is, is very, very stark. Then moving on to um, the, the cost itself of electricity. So because, you, because you're setting up solar on your roof, you're, that, that's a big upfront cost. So the way that, that we look at it in solar is how much, how long, how long does it take you to recoup your entire investment? And we know that with Enphase, for example, depending on the part of the country you live in, with a battery, a system with, with a battery, with a roof, we know that, it, that it's between five and eight years return on investment, break even, right? You, you're, you've paid for your roof, for your solar roof, between five and eight years. After that, 
electricity is free, right? Minus perhaps a little a little maintenance with cleaning the panels, but you can do that with a hose. So it's virtually free. With legacy utilities, of course, electricity is never free. So if you, the, the way I calculated the, the 7x to 10x is I'm anticipating that these systems will last about 50 years because that's about what we see. We see the panels that were set up in the late 70s when there was a whole movement in the United States to go solar. You had Jimmy Carter who had put solar on the White House, etc. So a lot of wealthy households had put solars. Once in a while, you see them on YouTube and you you see them on Twitter and the panels are still there and they are still producing 60-ish percent electricity of what they used to produce when they were put out. There's no moving parts in a solar roof, no moving parts whatsoever. So even though the warranty is 25 years, these systems long exceed the warranty, right? This is the same for a car. You buy a car, you're going to have a three-year warranty. Your car is going to last 15 years, right? So that's the whole idea here. Moving on to another advantage. Uh, which is another priceless different, significantly better, is that if you have a solar system on your roof, you're protected during an outage. If you just use utilities, you're not protected during an outage. And this is why we see a lot of people spending unreasonable amount of monies on system like, for example, a Generac or whatever, a gas generator, in order to uh, deal with power outages. Because if you have a family, if you have a big fridge, if you have everything in your house and the power goes out, you may lose the contents of your fridge. And there's a lot of emotional um, uh, fears associated with that. So a lot of people spend money just to get a power backup. Well, guess what? Why wouldn't you just get solar? If you get solar, you're protected against outages. You make your own electricity and you have a battery and the battery serves as your backup. And if it's during the day, you may not even draw on your battery because you're during the day. The sun is out and you just turn the sun into electricity directly for use by your home. So that's a major difference here. What's another difference? Well, Let's talk about how much power the homes of the future are going to need because if you live in a, if we live in a world where I personally believe we're going to we're going to go to a world where you know we're going to have two to three electric cars per household let's call it two well if you have two electric cars you know, there's going to be very real questions as to whether your service, your 100 amp or 200 amp service at your house, depending on the size of your house, whether your service is going to be able to handle it. If you use solar, you don't have to worry about changing your service because solar is what, right? Solar, you can put between 7x and 9x your needs on your roof in the form of solar panels. So you can produce a lot of excess energy, which then you can use to say, for example, fuel your car, charge your car, which is something that Enphase has introduced, but not just Enphase. They call it green charging, where you just have the solar hit the roof and then the electricity goes straight to charging your car. Um, there's many situations, especially in, in, in older homes, where your service is not going to be able to handle a full house and two electric cars. And so if that is the case, to me, the fact that your electricity you can produce uh, that much on your roof is between five, four and five times better than the current system, which is using utilities, right? As, assuming utilities can provide as much electricity as, say, 3x your needs, assuming that. That's my assumption ba baked into calculating this four to five times better. Okay, moving on to solar energy fuels your car. I've already briefly discussed this. But, um, of course, the, the main difference, why is this better to have solar energy fuel your car rather than just the grid? It's because if you fuel your car with, your, with the grid, yeah, it's going to be much cheaper than, say, gas, of course. And it is going to cost you about five bucks, you know, five to six bucks worth of electricity. But you're still going to have a cost, right? If you use an oversized solar roof, fueling your car has no cost attached to it. So I'm calling this twice as good, twice as good as the current system. Then... You can resell your energy to the grid. Your excess energy that you have stored in your battery or stored in your electric cars with an in-phase system, you can resell it to the grid. This is obviously not applicable to legacy utilities. Then, with abundant cheap energy, and the keyword here is cheap, this is why this is not applicable to legacy utilities, but if you have an oversized solar roof and you have all of this excess energy, then all of a sudden you have a bunch of next generation applications that are possible with that excess energy. The 
biggest one for me will be your ability to create water with atmospheric water generator. I think that's going to be a major one. Another one you could argue is the use of heat pumps to heat your home, thereby displacing the need for natural gas if you use a, uh, an oversized heat pump. So all of this excess energy is going to lead to new applications, and these applications are not very are, they're not going to be economical with legacy utilities because the prices uh, per kilowatt hour on legacy utilities is is going to keep going up so i consider this a priceless difference your ability to harness power from the sun and turn it into applications which today would not be economical what else well we have to talk about the asset, the asset of a solar panel. If you add solar panel on your house, you're you're adding a little bit of an asset. You know, now I don't want I don't want to sound like a what is it a snake oil salesman or anything like that. I don't want to sound like um, you know the, the seller the seller of solar at the dinner table. The value of the solar is not the value that you pay for it with the subsidies and with the labor, etc. But the value of the solar is not zero either. Right. If you pay thirty thousand for an install, maybe it's a little foolish to think that you're gonna increase the value of a house by thirty thousand. But it's not zero either, right? It's not zero either. So, is it fifteen thousand? Probably something like that. But you're paying money into an asset, into something that sits on your roof that has capability, that is an asset. You do not do that with legacy utilities. Your payment to a legacy utility is lost. Now. Another price that's different here is, of course, if you have solar, you're going to get direct subsidies. You're going to get 7,500. If you live in a state that has a state tax and that has specific subsidies, you're also going to you're going to make money like that, right? Because you may get a get a rebate on your, on your state tax. Of course, legacy utilities, you don't get the subsidies. It is the utility company itself that gets the subsidies, and you know most of them are publicly traded and they pay dividends and buybacks, etc. That's what you find for for legacy utilities. You don't get the, the, the subsidies directly. You get them directly if you put solar on your roof. Then, and this may matter, guaranteed guaranteed green energy. So. If you uh, if you care if 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 you want to have a lot of green energy, um, uh, and, and of course if you're a big household, eh, someone in the household is likely going to care, right? If 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 this is something that is important to you, uh, I believe green energy is a major selling point, and and there's a lot of countries out there, there's a, there's a lot of uh, states out there where people care about using green energy you even have uh, for legacy utilities some that go through having plans where you pay a plan and you get guaranteed grid energy except there is a problem the grid will never be able to offer you green energy because it's fungible energy is fungible you're going to be using the energy that's produced the nearest to you and so if it's a coal plant near to you you're going to be using that energy from the coal plant even though with with a with a play of energy credits even though the legacy utility is telling you that they're selling you green energy they're actually not selling you green energy right they're selling you the local energy and they're buying somewhere or somewhere else they're offsetting it somewhere else with green energy right if you if you're going to be an environmentalist and if you're really really going to care about that and pay attention to the fungibility of energy you're going to want green energy from your roof straight to your car without going through the grid and that's actually a big trend that Enphase is pushing in a lot of markets that are sensitive to these issues and lastly and this is a this is a point that I'm going to use especially for our European friends Lastly, protection from arbitrary cutoffs. And I remember a few months back reading about energy curtailment in certain regions of, of uh, the UK. I believe it was London and in, 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 uh, in England, something like that, where they had arbitrary cutoffs where they were deciding to uh, drop tension, right? Drop the power in some neighborhoods um, because the grid could not handle it. And so who do they decide to cut off? How do they decide to cut off the energy? You also have the issue of you know who's getting the energy cut off? Well, maybe, uh, maybe the utility company looks at your bill and they say, "Oh, you, you've used too much energy. You know, you have a big family. You've used a lot of energy, so we're gonna cur 
curtail your energy. This is something that may be coming uh, sooner than we think as governments try to, to, to ration energy and make sure that it's evenly spread because the grid has limitations, right? The grid has a lot of limitations. So they want to circulate or evenly spread it or give it, you know, uh, you know, everybody gets a 30 minute shut off of energy, but it's going to be at different times during the day. Um, if these cutoffs happen, and they are arbitrary from the standpoint of a customer, because they are, I mean, if you get your energy cut off, you, you're always going to be upset. So if it's something you care about, not getting your energy cut off, solar is a zero to one technology because with solar, it doesn't matter if you get your energy cut off or not because you have energy on your roof and if it's at night, it's in your battery and you are protected. You're protected from cutoffs. You're not protected with legacy utilities from the cutoff because in fact, it's the legacy utility that enables this cut off for the regulator. So if you want to be shielded from a bunch of issues with energy, if you want to take advantage of the value of cheap energy for all sorts of um, value creation, decentralization, right? Decentralization of, of powering your car. You don't have to go to a gas station anymore. You're independent. Decentralization of perhaps using a heat pump for your home, perhaps using an atmospheric water generation from your home, perhaps uh, mining Bitcoin or computing power for different projects and different endeavors and getting paid for doing that, perhaps saving your excess energy into your electric cars that are parked on the driveway and unloading them, exporting them into the grid when there is a high feed-in tariff. If you want to have all of these new technologies that are not yet present with legacy utilities, then and only then, if you look at a technology like an phase and solar, you would see why it is in fact a 10x technology. It is in fact, at the very least, in my view, one order of magnitude better than legacy utilities. And that is why solar is getting adopted and the adoption, can't wait to see the numbers in 2024, the adoption is uh, real. So this was not not investment advice. This is just entertainment. I hope you were entertained. Please like. Please subscribe. Please follow me on X at Beat Within the Mind Order. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. No investment advice. Have a good day.